Let's head to Queensland, which has become the only state to remove specially introduced pandemic laws preventing evictions. For more on this development, we go to reporter Michael Rennie at Queensland's Parliament House. Good morning, Michael. How's this move being received? Yeah, morning, Lisa. Well, um, it's not being received very well at all from certain sections of the community, that's for sure. But um, the, the state government says the, the freeze on residential evictions was put in place originally at the height of the pandemic uh, to stop people from moving around so much and people were just simply unable to move around. Now, some protection measures will remain in place and there will still be a uh, freeze on commercial leaseholders until the end of this year. But I want to bring in uh, Penny Carr. She is the CEO of Tenants Queensland. And Penny, how is this decision going to affect vulnerable people in the community? Yeah. Well, we know many families that uh, will be evicted before Christmas as a result of the lift of the evictions ban. Um, there's people who've been struggling to pay their rent. Um, as of today, their rent will go back to the contracted rent. So right at the time when they see their income decline, they're seeing their rent liability increase and that's a disaster for them. And, and the cuts to JobKeeper and job seeker will that also have an impact on these families and these people? That's right, and that's where their income is going to decline because they've had uh, they've been struggling already with uh, the, pretty much a loss of job overnight for many of them. They the first to um, lose their job, they're they're not seeing their jobs come back yet. They're probably going to be the last to get them, and right now they're seeing their income from job keeper and job seeker um, re reduced as well. What about landlords though? Some of them, not all, all of them are millionaires. Do, do you think they they do have the the right to to? To remove people from their, their properties that, that may not be paying rent? Well, it's a difficult situation. The pandemic isn't anyone's fault and we're all in this together. So what we've got to do is to share the burden of it. It can't fall um, only on the heads of, the, of renters who in the main have got uh, a less income and asset base than people. We know that 62% of landlords um, own multiple properties. Um, you know, they've also got rent mortgage deferrals. Um, we're not talking about renters not paying any rent. We're talking about them paying an affordable rent um, whilst we're in this situation. And what support is your, does your organisation offer people? So we give them um, advice and support to understand their tenancy rights and their responsibilities. And we've been working with many to try to uh, work through the new regulations and we'll work with them again as we move out of those um, COVID regulations back into the usual tenancy laws to try to help them manage the situation that they're in and those that are going to have to move to hope, hopefully prevent them from becoming homeless by you know, tapping them into other services. Penny, really appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you. That's Penny Carr, the uh, CEO of uh, Tenants Queensland. So, yeah, Lisa, uh, for some of those families that could be directly affected by this, it, it could be a very tough Christmas for them. Yeah, Michael, just before you go, a quick one. There's another big story in Queensland, allegation of sports rewards being aimed against the Queensland government. What's the story? Yeah, well, look, the Queensland Audit Office found uh, that there was actually an even split in sports grants across the period of time that they looked at. That was between um, July uh, 2017 and February 2020. Now, Mick uh, Debrenny, the sports minister, he intervened uh, 33 times, uh, which we, he was actually allowed to under the rules. Um, and the, he says that was uh, for correcting errors. And, and to put it in context, uh, what he actually looked at equates to about 1% of all sports grants awarded over that three-year period. All right. Thanks, Michael. Everything uh, becoming more heated as you're on the uh, countdown to a state election. Thanks.